we've turned on Uniflow. You should have gotten an email, uh, which leads you to your tenant, <coughs> which may lead you to your uh, cloud services agreement. If not, you can find it in the little icon, cloud services agreement. You can read all this stuff. There's an accept at the bottom. Once you do that, you should be presented with a dashboard. Once you're presented with a dashboard, you basically have a blank tenant. This video is going to show you how to set up a tenant um, and how to configure it real quick and apply it to a copier so you can use Uniflow. And I'll probably break this video into two videos and then we'll, we'll show you the using it on the screen in another video. So let's set up Uniflow real quick. Uniflow, let's go to groups. I'm going to add a group because you probably don't want everybody dropped in your administrator group. So I'm going to make a general users group. I'm going to hit save. We then are going to go to the gear so we can go to change some settings. Um, I would like a dollar sign and if I do run reports I want a dollar sign for my currency and I want all my currency to be two digits. I should be able to hit save. Also in America if you're normally people use Excel it likes to be comma delimited, so I'm going to change my separator to be a comma, not a semicolon. And then under user management, I want my users to be in this general group by default, which that's why we made the group first. So I'm going to go to manual. I'm going to allow us to make pins in case somebody forgets their pin. I'm going to have the system auto-generate. So anybody that I make a new user, it's going to auto-generate, and it's going to make a four-digit pin. The reason you want pins is it's easier to use on the copier side than typing your username and password. So at this point we should be able to come over and actually make a user. Let's make a user manually. Let's make the historic John Doe. We'll call him John.doe at we'll call it doe.john.com because it is going to want to try to email him. And I'm going to hit save and it's telling me it's going to auto generate a pin that's fine with me I'm going to hit OK <coughs> Uniflow likes uh, identities so this pin will identify when we go to a copier and we type this pin in it's going to know that this pin is linked to John Doe and as an admin you can never see somebody's pin for security reasons but if he does forget you can delete his pin and then under add so let's say we delete a pin, hit OK. Then under Add, we should be able to add a new pin back, and it's going to email him a new pin. John now has a new pin, which will identify him on the copier again. So that's the way that works. Now, the next thing we would need to set up, let's see, we've got the gear, we've got the settings set up. We need to add, we have some users set up already. Um, under the little printer-looking icon, if you are going to run reports, you can run what well, you need to generate what's called a price profile. I've already created a very simple one called DSI printing. So if you do add, all you really get is this name. Type the name, hit save. Then you can get to details. And as you see, you can identify copy jobs separate from print jobs, large jobs separated from small jobs. In America, what large means is bigger than legal. So 11 by 17 and 12 by 18 usually. Um, and any small is usually anything up to legal size. So letter and legal and anything smaller is considered a small. So if you do run reports, this is how it's going to apply the math based upon these settings. So let's flip over. I have a device linked, but let me delete it real quick. And then so the way you do this is you add a device. Mine is an image runner and copier. It has a code. This code, I'm going to copy to the clipboard. I'm going to download the little utility that puts Uniflow on the copier. And if you run it, oh, mine is already running. Let me find it, stop it, so that I can run it again. So notice this code is this code. Hit next. You need to add your device to here. 
uh, if you don't know your IP address, usually it's the counter button in the lower right of the screen, and then it should display your IP address. Mine is this. It's going to retrieve my settings. Yeah, I want to put the scan login and scan legacy UI. Hit OK. Then normally I do enable admin. Why? Because they say it works better. And then you hit start, you hit yes, and what it's doing now is putting Uniflow onto our system. Mine is going very quickly because I've done this before. Yours may need to install a minute, and reboot, that's normal. But once it gets done, it should reboot and bring you to a login screen, which uh, that may be where I, well, let me add let me close this. So we should have Uniflow on our machine. What we don't have yet is any scan profiles. What I mean by that is scan to Uniflow, uh, Uniflow, sorry, Online Express comes with scan to myself for free and scan to Google Drive for free. If you're in one of the other uh, subscription packages, you have a lot more scan locations. Either way you go, this is how you add one. Scan a profile. As you can see, you can narrow down. Let's, let's say we want to do a Google Drive, which we do. So you can find the scan to Google Drive. Notice it's the only one that has an install button. That means it's within our subscription, which in our case is free. Let's hit OK. We'll call it scan to Google Drive. We'll enable it on the simple UIs. And I'm going to have mine default to Simplex 300 DPI. I'll have it email or output to a PDF file and I'll just install. So that's going to create me a scan profile. Now it's going to have this icon since this is Google. Let's go ahead and make it a little Google looking icon. So when we see it on the screen it'll be more intuitive. I'm going to add a scan to myself button also. So you can hit the myself icon to kind of filter this list. And here again I have an install button. So I'll do that and I'll just click this and I'll use all the defaults, which is simplex, all those settings. And notice it creates this little cloud looking thing, but let's say we want to make it look like an email. We'll make it look like this icon. And we hit save. So now when we go to the copier, we're going to see those scan profiles. So I think what I'm going to do at this point is in this video and we're going to pick up with uh, the copier interface in the next video. So I'll see you in a minute.